The BMW R60 slash 5 raw car issue has finally been resolved. In this video, I'll share with you guys both the positive and the negative aspects of these parts. If you watched my last video about the rock arm assembly, you'll know about the poor quality parts I received from Germany. To my best knowledge, these were original parts, but many of you pointed out these could be counterfeit or even aftermarket parts. To keep this story short, I came to an agreement with the business owner to pack all the parts and send them back to Germany for a quality check. And this process took over a month. The business owner did not offer me an explanation to the poor quality parts he sent me, but instead he just sent me a refund for the parts I purchased, even though we didn't mutually agree on that. Now, without an explanation to why these parts were in poor condition or why they weren't up to the standards of the service manual, I was just left with the old used parts that came out of the BMW R60 slash 5 engine. So I set out to find some brand new rock arm shafts online with an OEM BMW sticker or even some new old stock parts that have been on a shelf for a long time. And I was just hoping that they were in good condition and that they weren't like the same ones that I ordered from Germany. So I found three in Sweden and the guy gave me a pretty good deal for all three. And then I found two more in the US so in total I would have five rock arm shafts and I was just hoping four of them would be good to work with and I'll tell you what it's actually harder to find these 14 and a half millimeter rock arm shafts than I thought so if you guys are having an issue with this on your bike you might want to pick some of these up before they are not available anymore a few weeks had passed and I finally received all rock arm shafts I had a good look at them and I noticed they were probably manufactured in different companies because the oil passageway plug was different on three rock arm shafts compared to the other two but it's not a big deal because the size is what matters. Four out of five rock arm shafts measured the same and the fifth one was actually half a thousandth of an inch smaller and I'll leave the metric conversion right here. So it doesn't seem like much, but it actually matters on this assembly. So I contacted my local machine shop to see if they can bore and hone down to the size of 14 and a half millimeters. That is the size of the inside diameter of the bushing. And they said they might just be able to do that. So we discussed this assembly and I dropped off all four rocker arms at the machine shop to have them custom make brand new bushings for the used rocker arms I already had. Now exactly one month later, they got the job done. So the rocker arms and the rocker arm bushings were finished. And it took a little bit longer because they weren't really set up for this. They usually do pistons, cylinders, and stuff like that. So they obviously have jigs for that. And this was kind of a custom job, but they actually got it done. So I'll explain quickly what they did to all of these rocker arms. They honed out the inside diameter, which is the cast part on this rocker arm. Then they machined a bronze bushing on the outside diameter. So it has a press fit. They push that into the rocker arm. So there's no clearance in between those two parts. Then they machined the inside diameter and then also honed it to accommodate the brand new rocker arm shafts. And as you guys can tell, that inside surface is way smoother than whatever I received from Germany. The setup that I have in my hand right here is different from the original setup and I'll explain exactly why I opted for this modification. Now usually between two mechanical components you'll have one clearance. One of those components is stationary and the other one is able to rotate. Now in this case you'll see the rocker arm shaft bolts to the cylinder head and the rocker arm itself pivots on the shaft just like that. Now there's only one clearance in between these two parts and that will be filled with oil so these parts actually don't touch each other and an oil film will be applied in between these two parts. But now BMW took a different approach. This right here is the used rock arm shaft and this right here is a used bushing. Between these two parts you'll have one clearance but there's also another clearance that BMW put onto these two parts and that clearance is in between the bushing outside diameter and the rocker arm inside diameter. So between three parts, you'll have two clearances. And as you guys could tell from the parts that I received from Germany, it's not easy to machine three parts accurately. It is much easier to machine two parts and then fit them together. So I'm not exactly sure why BMW chose this route, but if you guys know the answer, please let me know down below in the comment section because I'd really like to know why they did this. As you can tell, there's always something that can be improved on a 50 year old engine, but sometimes it's okay to keep things the way they were and not always over engineer everything, especially if I wanna keep this engine as close to stock as possible. On this table, I also have a newer rock arm assembly that can be found in the BMW slash six and slash seven motorcycle models. This was introduced in 1974 as an upgrade to the bushing style rocker arm. Now both styles of rock arm assemblies have their pros and cons, but I'll leave that topic for another day because I really want to focus on this BMW R60 slash 5. If you guys have any questions about the BMW slash 5 rock arm assembly, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. 
If it's more technical, please feel free to send me an email. You'll always find my email down below in the description. But also let me know what you guys make of this bushing modification I've done within the rocker arm itself. I know this modification is different from the stock version, but I think this way I will have less play on the top end of the engine and that will also cause less wear within the valve train. If any of you have done the same thing I've done right now, please let me know down below in the comment section so I don't feel alone. In my upcoming video, I'll finally be able to assemble the BMW R60 slash 5 engine. And it's been taking so long just because of these parts right here. But soon I'll be able to share the full details with you guys on the full assembly process. And I cannot wait to share that with you guys. So thank you so much for watching this one. And I hope to see you guys in the next one.